for August 5th at 6.01 p.m. Uh, we have all counselors present and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to go ahead and get started, and we are going to start off this evening with uh, two items. Uh, first of all, let's see, recognition of two of our employees. Uh, item 15, we are looking at the recognition of Nelson Rogin. He has worked uh, last month for the marks 40 years of working for the town of Transfer Station. And so tonight, we want to recognize him and uh, thank him for his service and dedication to our town. Thank you, Nelson. What's us all? All us. All right. Yes. Yeah. Should we get everyone on the end? Yeah, let's turn Front center. Okay. Hey. Everyone? It's all us. All right. Yeah, you should be sitting there a little closer. Right. All right. You guys look over here. Over here, Nelson. Oh. Uh, they chainsaw Nelson. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, I for one, will miss Nelson at the transfer station. Not that I've been there, I'm not lazy, but he always cheered me up and helped me out, and I love that. But thank you, thank you for all those years, Nelson. You're not here. We're talking about the I, I just want to say something. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to say it's a pleasure seeing you every time I go to the transfer station. <laughs> You're always, you know, cheerful and you, you make the trip, uh, you know, enjoyable. So not that it should be, but <laughs> thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to our item 118. We've got a, an employee that is retiring, uh, and that is Matt Burnham, our public works director. He's there for over 33 years in service in her town. So we want to say thank you and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. Come on up now. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I Give him a good side. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, there we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, sir. Are there any other questions? Oh, I know. Who is the work that for parents when they own nickels? Oh, jeez. They still work that for parents. Wow. On the side. Thank you. Did you say? Uh, That's mine. The next person I meet that doesn't love Nelson will be the first person I meet that doesn't love Nelson. <laughs> and so, uh, 
Uh, don't give him any ideas for so long. We, we, we want him here for another four years at least. Uh, and, and I said the other night uh, about Matt a little uh, going away soiree that uh, I feel a little cheated because I only got to work with uh, Matt uh, for a year. And he's been very generous to me with his time and expertise. But more importantly, I mean, when you think about the level of commitment that he's made to the town of Winthrop for the last 30 plus years, uh, thanks. snowing for a lot of snow for hours upon hours on end and you know doing the best with the resources that you have available to him to help uh, improve streets and so forth is the community owes him a huge debt of, of gratitude so it's uh it's been a pleasure working uh with both of these guys and we have in the back room right now just for a few moments of cake and punch and uh some going away party gifts for, uh, for both of you guys so at that time we'll go ahead and break until 6 20, and congratulations to so much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, everybody. We're going to move on to item 120. Oh Discussion and consideration of a joint heritage proposal. Now, we received a proposal from uh, a committee that has come together, uh, comprised of um, Priscilla Jenkins. Jim King is the chair. Uh, Jennifer Phillips, Kathy Ward, Sherry Dwayne, and Linda Esterbrook. Um, looking at a proposed heritage day for, I believe it's Labor Day weekend. And uh, we received a, a packet. And so at this time, I would ask if there's anyone from the council that has any questions. We do have a uh, majority of the council in the audience. And if uh, they'd like to come up and discuss that proposal. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, so, to, so I want to thank you for uh, having me uh, present this proposal that we have put together. Uh, I'm really proud to say that I've been working with a great group of people uh, that I would like to just mention. And that is uh, Jennifer Phillips, Priscilla Jenkins, Kathy Ward, Linda Easterbrook, and Sherry Boyan, and you know, the people who make up the Winter Heritage Day Committee. We are proposing that Winter declare Saturday and Labor Day weekend as an official holiday to celebrate the heritage of Winter, our people, and history. That is the proposal. The salient fact is that we want to make it an annual holiday. And in your packet, we presented you know, several different documents uh, an outline of the uh, tasks that have to take place, a letter and a copy of the proposal, as well as a budget. Budget is a projected, uh, anticipated budget only for this particular year. And we will learn as we go and make it a bigger and better event in the future that I think we can all be really proud of. I would like to say that last year we had a pretty successful event with a minimum amount of resources allocated to the uh, event. Day. It was an outgrowth of the Sester Centennial and that is where the idea for this um, was inspired from. So Priscilla Jenkins is going to talk a little bit about our vision and some other things. And then uh, Jennifer Phillips is going to talk a little bit about the uh, community support that we have and a few other things. I have uh, uh, one thing to say about that. It's not really an official part of the presentation, but I do have uh, some copies of the proposal that have been signed by members of the community. We have, I don't know how many signatures, not a lot. It mostly happened when I walked up and down the street and accosted and made a nuisance out of myself. But uh, 
in a little way it paid off. And so we can pass this around if you'd like to take a look at it. At it. It's um, not anything, I mean, a real significant con consequence. However, it does show that we have uh, some support in the community as well. So uh, with that, I would like to take uh, Priscilla or, or have Priscilla uh, present a little bit about their history. Thank you. Let me address this. You'll see many people who participated last year did sign on that. Cut the chase on them down. Um, so I just want to say, um, bringing this town together, with bringing this town together, whoever we are, it's long been my dream. On the council, I look for many things like solving damn problems and adult ed, which has served so many of our um, young adults. And as I campaigned, campaigned when I was in the mode to the campaign, I heard folks wanted to change our mixed community from labor based to bedroom community based. And I think the economic diversity is enriching and needed. And all share the blessings of this community. And this event is for everybody, professional, non-professional, just everybody who lives in town. That's all I really want to say. Thank you. For those that do not know me, my name is Jeff Phillips. I moved to this community in the fall of 2019, but ever since I was a child, I referred to Winthrop, Maine as my home. You see, my mom grew up on the top farm on Old Lewiston Road. So to me, before I moved here, Maine was my second home. Before moving here, I lived in two different communities, both larger than the size of Portland, Maine, but all had that small town feel to them. And that's something I look forward to when I moved here. In both communities, I was active in many events, large and small, public and private. Additionally, for my career, I have over 25 years of meeting planning, hospitality, and customer service experience. I was taught to give back and to be proud of where you come from. In this community, I'm an active member of the Winthrop Range Historical Society, serving on their board, the Winthrop Range number 209. My son is a member of the Winthrop Scout Troop 604, and I am an active member and deacon at the Winthrop Congregational Church. The reason why I'm telling you all of these things is because not only am I involved on the Winthrop Heritage Day Committee, I plan to be a part of the operations team that builds this into a successful event. It is for all these reasons why I'm standing here to speak to you today and to bring Winthrop Heritage Day to the community because I feel it is important to bring people together to form unity between individuals that may live beside each other but don't know each other, or those that know each other but haven't talked to each other for a while. I believe in making life fun and having a fun event that the town can look forward to each year that is supported by the town and for the town. I look forward to the opportunity to allow local not-for-profits to use this event as a fundraiser for their organization, be it selling ice cream or other organizational items that helps them survive, or maybe having a silent auction at their booth. I think it's important to provide a place where all of that happens and we can continue to prove, improve upon it based upon citizen feedback each and every year. We want Winthrop Heritage Day to be a festive occasion that many people within the community will enjoy. I have been actively speaking to, with many townspeople who all seem very supportive and excited about such a potential annual event. In fact, with each conversation, it seems like interest and excitement about Winthrop Heritage Day is growing stronger and stronger. When I look around at smaller surrounding communities, that have town-based celebrations, 
I have to question myself on why aren't we doing something like this here as well? Why don't we have a town celebration? Now is the time to change that and bring the community together for such an event. I am asking you to please support this event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing Jennifer to come to speak. I got one question. Okay. So, uh, I don't know, Jen and Priscilla, or somebody wants to answer it. What, what exactly are you are you asking the council? Uh, obviously, for support, but is there any financial? I mean, are you asking for money? If, if so, how much? So we know that this year's budget has already been set for the town, so we don't expect to dip into it financially to make it difficult um, for individuals or cause people to worry about their taxes going up because they supported this event and so on. Basically, we have talked to a couple different individuals who advise that the overall event insurance should be covered under the umbrella policy that the county has. If we were to get a separate policy outside of the event, it would cost us probably close to $700. Is that about the quote? And that could be money that we could use for resources in other ways. We also would have to apply for town permits and things like that. So this year, we are just simply asking for the town to support us by providing the insurance for the event, allowing us to work with um, town individuals such as Nelson, who was a wonderful participant last year at the event, and um, have this become a successful event. Um, we would want to have a meeting after the event is over to suggest that members of the community that have become more involved and maybe a council um, individual be a part of for future events so that way we can make an even bigger, better event that could have some um, finances provided for it. Yeah, in sure. But it's to be aware. So did that answer your question? It did. It did for this year. Uh, one question I had that was actually would be fancy. Yeah, we looked into that to find out if that insurance what does the current insurance we have cover that? Yeah, so typically, obviously the town has insurance, but we would probably have to purchase additional insurance to cover an event like this. And uh, particularly if they're a bounce house, so there's something Shannon and I talked a little bit. Uh, there's a certain amount of liability that goes with that. And while the vendor may have insurance for an activity like that, we would also want to have insurance as well. So. You know, it would not be an exorbitant cost, but it would be a little bit of an additional cost on our insurance line item. The vendor that we do have for the bounce house, um, Sherry, who's been working on um, the insurance aspect of things, she talked to today, and they can add the town of Winthrop as the supporter and already has the document that names um, the town of Winthrop as a co-sponsor of yeah, additional yes. and additional insurance. Mm -hmm. And that would be, you would get a certificate and that would be at no additional cost to yeah. the account. So that would definitely help, but we would still need a, a certificate just to cover the event itself from the from the main risk. Did you have a question? I mean, I, I think the event, I like the idea of the event, um, and I think that it's worth looking into, I, I would like to steer what the cost of these are insurance is because that sometimes is scary, but um, <laughs> I think that I like it. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a supporter of the idea. I mean, I, I like to have something in town as well. I do have presentations mm -hmm. that you and I talk on um, what comes around the date. And I just was looking for a different big bank you got. And why not be the biggest where folks from town being last weekend rotate out of school or to the you know it's a long weekend on a holiday weekend and just how did you guys come up with the date? Um that was a date that was set last year when Priscilla and Jim had the event. And generally when people go to an event, 
they look for it the same time next year. Or if they heard about it after the event and they were in town, they would go, oh, I'll have to mark my calendar or right. pay attention. So that's why that date was choose, chosen. Um, I know that that is um, Jim's preferred date. However, I think this is something that could also be revisited after this year's event. We'll decide as a committee whole if that's how we want to continue to move forward or if we want to change that option. Yeah, I was just wondering if we didn't all just walk it out. Because right. the last people go away. Because I don't want something like the date to be in the air. Sure. For the council. Priscilla has something sure. you want to say. I just want to add a lot of people don't go away and a lot of people visiting our here so they would be uh, it would be available to them. Yeah. Any other questions from the uh, council? Not so much question, I guess, is, uh, well, well, actually, yeah, we'll start with this. You guys want to be recognized as a formal, or do you want the town to adopt a formal committee uh, in regards to this? Is that correct? Right separate? now, we're the formal committee. Obviously, we will accept other individuals that want to work on this event, volunteer to participate in the event assist with the event and everything else. In the coming year, we want to see if there's other individuals, and I feel that if the town is involved and we do have um, a responsibility to the town that somebody's from, the council would be the liaison to our committee, as well as other individuals that might want to join the committee. And maybe this is that for Okay, uh, so a couple of points on that. If you want to get um, financial accounts to get open, either you would have to form probably an LLC or some form of nonprofit uh, to maintain your own committee status. Right. If you want to utilize town uh, accounts, then it would have to be adopted through the community process that we already have in place. So then there would have probably be applications in a formal committee that would require appointments and having them. Council right. So that's something that you could talk about. And that's something we could talk about next year. Yeah. Um, this year, we've already thought about ways that we're going to handle it for the first year um, financially, since we have shared organizations with either the Grange or the History Center. We could probably set up a secondary account to ask our treasurer to, you know, to take in the money and hold it on our behalf. So I would, yeah, just as a personal preference, I think it would be better off, uh, at least as I see it right now, not being an official town uh, committee necessarily, but, but which, like you said, the town uh, agreeing to uh, be a sponsor, just right. actually. They need to know. Uh, so I would probably recommend more formal uh, delineation and you know, making sure that you have and officers and like so meeting and stuff. And, being able to document that. Um, so I do, I do think it's a good idea. I would ask, uh, do we have any money at all to be able to? Well, we didn't budget anything. Right. Um, we always end up the year at the board. And so it sort of depends upon how we're going to say. And then you guys don't see any financial support this year? We won't turn down any financial support, I'll say that. But we have already um, a target list of some um, organizations and some vendors uh, that have, and, and businesses that have said that they would support us. We don't have all the numbers put together yet until we have a yes or no. Okay, yeah, and that's fair. <laughs> and, um, but we do have one major one in the Kennebec Savings Bank. Perfect. And there's obviously time between then and now. Do you suppose anyone else can have Okay. Um, I don't see a specifically named, a specific rider or a specifically named co insurer on that insurance form. Can you hear me? Hmm? I can't hear you. I, said, I don't see a specific rider or a specifically named co insurance 
Well, it lists the uh, the town of Winthrop as a certificate holder. The description says the certificate holder is additional insurer, which is what we yeah. want, to the extent coverage is provided in the following endorsement. And then the uh, the I missed that one. Yes. Yeah. And then the insurance itself just is a million dollars per occurrence, which is standard for the insurances that we seek. Can you still make a motion? Um, that we do um, endorse the proposal, um, uh, of course, withstanding uh, the ability to find out what insurance. Um, oh, right. move to approve the Heritage Day event for 2024. As proposed, yeah, oh, with second. insurance. But okay. With Winthrop paying the insurance. With right. our own using our insurance. And if we have to add one, yes. Okay. I'll second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to these events. Thank you. Moving to item 121. Yes, oh, yes, thank you. Brought to my attention that we left out a public comment at the beginning of this meeting. So at this time, I will open the floor to you any public comment if you could come to the podium. And state your name and your. My name is Sharon Williams. Oh, here. Hello. Come right up to the oh. microphone so that folks online can hear you. I, I just want to say that for many years I've worked with the Municipal Association. I've been in insurance over 40 years, but that certificate was just a sample of okay, what we passed around because the first one I got had no additional insured on it. It had no, and I can, I said, no, this isn't going to work. This is only going to cover the balance house company. So she gave it just a sample. This, the one you will actually get, and we're going to be more specific with the dates, so, so on and so forth. The biggest thing I need to stress, however, is this is at Norcraft Point. And that's why we're trying to get it because we're, we're talking both lunches and parking and having to get it all broke down for the day, just like last year. So there was a little bit that wasn't mentioned, but I just that's all part of the umbrella of the town. And I just wanted to say I think you're gonna have no cost on the main municipal because they're they're absorbing the balance house company is absorbing the cost of the additional insured under her own insurance by having the town of its reply. Just wanted to make that clear. I don't think you should have a cost through the municipal. Okay. Sure. Thank right. you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other comments? Public comment? Come up to the podium. I just want to thank you guys. I just want to invite you all to come down on the 31st of August to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that has any public comment? Good. Good. I know Bill Williams is here to speak about something specific. So Chief Brooks, if oh, you, Bill, if you want to come to the to the podium and then and then I know the chief has something he wants to share as well. Yeah, back in 2008, 2009, 2010, we built subdivision box on lighting in Winthrop. And we are fully intending of having the town take over the, the road maintenance. Okay, now we're ready to get our second road of pavement on and looking for the town to go ahead to take over that road maintenance. And just so the council is aware, I don't know if you saw the email that I sent earlier today, but in Bill's letter, to us is in front of you, but we do have an ordinance, a road and street construction ordinance that speaks specifically to the acceptance of town roads. And under that ordinance, the first procedure in that process is to call a meeting at the site of the road. So we would go out and actually have a meeting at Fox Run Lane uh, to talk about the proposal. And, uh, you know, one of the questions I think that we'd be bandied about at a meeting like that is whether or not the uh, the road does meet the specifications as required by the ordinance and what evidence there is that that it does. And so uh, Don Emerson, our town planner, and I have uh, talked about this over the last few days. And our, our suggestion to you is that we find a time and date. We can have a special meeting out there 
Um, obviously, all the uh, property owners out there would be involved. We would post it so anybody from the public could attend. And we start that conversation so that you can start determining whether or not it's appropriate for the town to accept them. It would. Uh, one question I have. You, uh, with the subdivision, you must uh, you must have had the engineering drawn oh, yes. all that stuff. Yeah, they told us where to put the culverts in, the map box to go in, and he, he did all the supervising on the job. Yeah. And, and that was all done specifically to town yeah. to specs. Yeah. yeah. And our question at this point, simply because it's been nearly 15 years since the road was installed, is the road may have been built at that time to specifications. Of course, it didn't get the final layer of pavement on it that was anticipated. And and does the road still meet those those specifications? And we've talked to the pavement company that's going to come in and they've got to finish pavement the cul de sac. Okay. And they're going to take and repair some spots on the road. It's been 15 years. Uh, we did put town water in on that road. Dan's got some things he's got to do. We're raising the, raising the, uh, oh, I'm not sure what it is. He's going to raise them all up to the pavement is where it needs to be. Um, we're really ready to finish that project. We've got, he needs a damn well. Yeah. Damn well. Yeah. yeah, he's talking about raising manhole covers and stuff. Yeah, like all that. Uh, so we've got five items down. Only the end. Yeah, there's yeah. one of them. There it is. Yeah. And we did set it up to town specs, and that's why we did town hall and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, well, and so it was just a we didn't have time to put this on the agenda before it was posted. And so our suggestion was that you know Bill just come and explain his request. And then our recommendation to you is we can set a time. And if you want to do that right now, we could do that. Or if you want us just to work with you to try to find a, a time and date that we work on. Their members to be able to be so under the process, the planning board is invited to that meeting, and so we will encourage them yeah. to attend. You know, this is an unusual situation simply because the road was built 15 years ago, and, and now 15 years later, we're looking at the possibility of accepting. Okay, um, immediately following or prior to our second meeting in September, um, then we had this meeting as well. I don't know the date was probably required. When, when is your time like, like, What our plan is uh, we've got a couple lots getting ready to be sold and we would like to do some of that that work after we put driveways in and that kind of stuff. It's all better for the road. Um, have a little bit of planning on that. We'd like to pay it this fall. So, so we're talking like November about right? December. No, 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 October. Geez, I'd like to see it paid in October. Okay. If I'm going to pay it, I'm going to pay it in October. <laughs> now you have a process to see after the payment. Yeah, so so the, the meeting out there would be sort of the first step. And then you you may want to engage in more deliberations. There may be more evidence that you would want from, from Bill. Should we want uh, Oh, oh no! I think no, I no, think... no. He's what he wants that before. He wants to know what we're yeah. doing. Well, yeah. So we spend sixty thousand dollars on payment. I want to make sure the town's going to take it on. So how about if although we did agree on the house in meeting in August, how about if we agree to meet out there on the normal second meeting of August? I, I, it meeting. doesn't matter to me. I'm going to be around. So I'm just trying to find a date for you to hang someone. Are they August meeting? Works for me. I'm just throw some dates. Well, if, if August 19th works for you guys, we can go ahead and. Works for me. Coordinate with the planning board. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. 19th would work for you, you think? Yeah. 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 That I'm sorry. Sarah. The planning board is the approving body. So that's no, no, it would be the council. The council is the body that accepts the roads. So we would provide you the information of what the planning boards. So we uh, well, no, not even. No. Yeah, so the planning board has approved the subdivision and they approve the conditions, the, the specs. Uh, that were in there. So now this is just a matter of confirming whether or not the, the road still meets the town specifications 
for 15 years and whether or not you 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 deem it uh, appropriate to accept it as a town roadway. So if I could ask Andy, can you do you know or can you inquire at this point if we have the legal, any legal obligation to accept the road? You do not. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, with and then the, the information that we would probably want, right, is a the cost of what you're going to do right there. So we'll know right what's going to move forward. And then uh any previous uh making it up on the original. Yeah. Well, so and, and and it, also specs on right, 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 all the yeah. planning yeah. and stuff that we've asked about the first time. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. probably also gonna want to know. From the road department, if you want, uh, you know, what some idea of what to expect for future maintenance and plan on the same thing. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Thank, Thank you. Can you tell? Are there any other questions, comments, comments, or comments you need? Public comment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'd love to stop this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't want to take a long time. The town manager suggested I speak. Uh, now I realize where the camera is, I won't sit my butt in the front row. Yeah. I'll stay a couple rows back and there. But, uh, Dan Brooks, fire chief, as you are well aware, a couple of things that we talked about today um, at our director's meeting. Uh, in the past, we've had on Halloween evening a trunk or treat at the fire station, and we Batted around a little bit trying to move that more in town. And I think our decision is going to be to probably have, like we did during COVID, the trunk or treat town wide on this uh, town hall lane. Have people park in the football field parking lot and walk down through, and then they could walk to other areas of town. I don't know if that requires a council motion to close that road. We'll probably look into that, and if we need to, we'll come back. We obviously have a little bit of time, but that's something that we're want to promote. Try to get people more in town, where the fire station is off two two. It's a little bit farther away, and it works very good during COVID. That was a drive-through deal, where this one we probably have it as a walk-through. Um, people could come from either side of town, so forth, such so on. Uh, the other thing that um, I mentioned that he thought I should make everyone aware of is. Last Sunday, not this Sunday, but last Sunday, we sent our fire boat, uh, rescue boat into the Iron Man uh, process. There was about half a dozen different boats there. They did end up rescuing one person. Uh, the boat was pretty close to the start line, and somebody had an issue right out of the gate. I think about seven or eight people total were brought out of the water by boats, but ours was very close to the beginning, so we had just the one. And then they asked us to stay on. The design of our boat has a flat front bow that you can drop in the water and you can literally walk in and out right off the front bow. So they asked us to pick up the buoys for them because our boat could do it so much quicker than the other boats. Once the boat got back here and went back into the station, later that day, the ambulance got called out for someone with, a, I'm not sure if it was a sprain or a broken ankle, something along that line on one of the islands on Moranica. So that was one of the keys to this boat is it holds eight to 10 people, eight technically, but I mean, it will hold the weight of 10. So we were able to put EMTs, we were able to uh, put firefighters on there, go out to the island, pull that person and somebody that was with them onto the boat, bring them back to the point and have them transported. So just a, a lot of times the boat can be hit or miss in that there's other boats out there on the lake and they might get to an island we've gone out this will be the fourth time we've used the boat this summer. One time was one of those deals where we just drove around looking for the emergency and was told a half an hour later that some other boat passing by had already picked the people up. And similar to another time we were called out because there was some people trapped on a boat and we went out to pick them up. And by the time we get ready to launch, they called back and said they didn't need us. So these were actually two times when we actually transported patients on the boat. So, I mentioned it at the meeting today and he thought uh, you guys might be interested in that. It's like any other piece of equipment we have, you, you're never 100% sure uh, exactly how often you use it, but when you have it, you need to have the right equipment. So um, other than that, I'm gonna hang around for the discussion about the aqua funds and if you have any other questions, let me know. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Chief. I do have to say that the UTA did do a trunk or treat up in the football field parking lot two couple months ago. It was very successful. It was a great location for that. Uh, lots of kids came out. And it sounded like you had an event all weekend with a boat. Yeah, that would be the intent too, would be obviously coordinated with everybody and try to be in one spot for all. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Is there any other public comment at this time? All right, with that, we will move on to item 121, consideration of awarding contracts in response to a request for bids for heating fuel and gasoline 2024 2025. We received two bids, one from Augusta Fuel Company uh, with the number two heating fuel for $3.18 and protein at $1.58. 587 per gallon uh, with AFC low tanks and with our fuel company for number two heating fuel at 339 per gallon and protein at 1899 per gallon. Uh, gasoline at 25 cents above the Portland terminal price on day of delivery. Are there any comments or questions from the uh, I have a question. Did anybody um Barry went for fuel that they lost the bid. So I uh, emailed them that we'd be meeting tonight, provided all the background information. I did not get any response. I mean, would they have an opportunity to rebid it? I guess I, I, mean, I would. I would not recommend that because I don't. I think that would. Uh, yeah, that's. I nice. think that would diminish the integrity of the uh, bidding yeah. process if we allow people then to submit another bid. You know, someone else says so. Okay. so as you know, in a, in a purchasing policy, if a local bidder is within 5%, then a preference can be given to a local vendor or necessarily the low bidder. Uh, as I noted in the background memo, Winthrop Fuels number two oil bid was almost 7% higher, and the propane bid was was 20% higher uh, than what AFC uh, bid. So I would uh, I would recommend we, st we stick with our purchasing policy, award the low bid for oil and propane to Augusta fuel and the bid to gasoline to winter fuel. I have a question. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I understood that when the tanks were put in out here, winter fuel did the install and own the tanks. So how do we put another vendor's fuel in those tanks? So, so those tanks serve the school. Okay. And so we don't pay for the propane that the town offices use at the school. I talked to Augusta Fuel. They said it's a simple matter, say, for instance, at the fire station. They're going to come in, empty out what's in the winter fuel tank, install their own tank, put that fuel back into the uh, Augusta Fuel tank, and then and then we'll alert winter fuel to come up and pick up their, their empty tank. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I was just going to comment on questions so much as just saying that, you know, signing off on the warrants and looking through the warrants, it is very clear that our, uh, one of the largest expenditures is also, it is prudent that, you know, are making sure that we are the best value. So, of course, you know, and along with that point, and don't mean to interrupt Jim, but, um, you know, reliance on these fuels is going to be diminished pretty significantly once we install the heat pumps. Now, that doesn't mean we won't be using fuel at all, but um, we're going to be, you know, trading one one heating source for another, hopefully starting this winter. So, I read this with so we're in being from town, some of like knowing that if it owns one of the people who've been in town here their whole lives, I really am kind of leaning towards, and this is my proposal, this is building about the number two. I understand we're talking about like two percent of those wavering. The obviously the token is 20 percent, so a bit higher, but you know, one point nine percent giving it awarding it because I know we have a policy of like within five percent. I was considering at least letting them have the one that people choose the number two and um and kind of move a split basically. Let uh, Augusta have the one with the people and have the number two and the gasoline because obviously somebody else is offering that. But for this year and see where it goes, so maybe it'll be more competitive next year. But let's just find out how it's on it. Um, I know they're all vessels pretty much here in town. 
I think we're up to the, you know, like the taxpayers and whatnot, but I just, that's my thought. Uh, this question is directed to Chief Brooks. Uh, from an emergency facility standpoint, four o'clock in the morning, uh, been on a hybrid for six hours pumping uh, out of fuel. Does this present a problem with you? With the convenience that Winthrop Fuel provided with having access to all of their pumps or whatever you needed. So, so I did enough attention to what we read. And, and you're talking about not buying gasoline or yeah. fuel from Winter Fuel? We would keep getting gasoline from Winter Fuel. Yes. I don't know what the diesel What about diesel? I can see the diesel. You know, we have no other vendor. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no place but Winter Fuel for diesel, unless we go to Fumilin Farms. Yeah. And we, we did that like through this. No, there, because there was no one else. I mean, we tried that last year. No one else. A set over rack price. Or... It, it's it's just whatever the, the rent price is. Yeah, so I don't think we would have any conflicts with that because in the past they've used generators to keep us running and going. And the same as uh, the fuel down the gasoline. We only had one truck that runs a gasoline and that as a generator. So the lease cars would be good. So I don't think it would affect gasoline. And diesel fuel yeah, so the gasoline actually gets delivered to our fuel deep, and then that's where public works, fire department, police department, and so forth go and refuel their vehicles. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Uh, question I have I, I, we talked last budget season about uh, looking into uh, combining the bids between the town and the school for increased buying power. Did we look into that at all? Where, um, where did we leave that? The, the, the school is comfortable with their arrangement with Winthrop Fuel. Okay, so they're, they're, that's, that's where the... They're not interested in competitive bidding with, with just purchasing their fuel from Winthrop Fuel. Okay. School yes. So they don't do competitive bidding on anything? N not, for, not for fuel. I, I would make a note for two cents of it. Is the school buys their fuel by 10,000 gallon close, whereas the town's buying 100 gallons here, 500 gallons there. What, you, know, you got to go to 10 different buildings to do the library and the annual slide around 100 gallons here, 200 gallons there. So that price is going to be higher than drop 10,000 gallons and drive off. So I think the school probably wouldn't want to go with us because it's only going to drive their price up a little bit because now whoever's bringing the big fuel is also going to do all the little stuff if it was an outside competitor rather than with their fuel. But just a, just a point I would make. My, my brother used to work for Earning Oil and he made that point to me once. You're not going to get the same price, 100 gallons of whack versus 10,000 gallons. Whatever it's worth. Anything else? I suggest uh, move to approve contract with Augusta Fuel Company for number two oil and propane for 2024 25. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Five and two. Right, motion passed. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve a contract with Windsor Fuel Company for gasoline for 2024 2025. So, all in favor? All in favor? Moving on to item 122 consideration of awarding a contract in response to a request for bids for winter sand. We received five different bids, uh, one from Manta Construction and $7 per yard with Town Pickup, Blue Rock Earthworks. I believe you received that from them last year. Uh, our sand uh, at $7.85 per yard with Town Pickup, $11 per yard delivered. C.H. Stevenson, Stevenson for $7 a yard with Town Pickup, $12.5 yards uh, per yard delivered. Blue Beer Construction at $8.40 per yard with Town Pickup and $13.40 per yard delivered. And Elmery Field excavation at 750 a yard with town pickup and 1150 per yard delivered. Yes. Go ahead. 
Well, keep it up this far, you know, this particular sand, the roads. I don't think it's going to listen to us, but I've said ever, ever pick it up just based on the cost. Well, do we just put that in there as a earmark that happens? Ways. Just give the council options. Okay. I, I mean, our recommendation is that we go in this instance with L. Merrifield for the for the amount yeah. delivered. I'm disagreeing with that. I just, yeah. I just I'm kind of wondering why we had that. Yeah. In, in, in the past, in the yeah, in the past, that's what the town has always done. This past year was the first year that we had some some sand delivered. So just as a point of comparison, it gives you some options to to deal with. But but our recommendations would go with Merrifield because. Again, they are within 5% of the low bid. And, and and this is critically important, the quality of their sand is really good. So we had some issues this past year, and uh, but not when we've used Merrifield sand. So for those two reasons, we're recommending that, that Merrifield be awarded the bid. I just want to Well, if, if you guys want to do that moving forward, we will certainly do that. So the, the 1150 a yard delivered uh, sand into price from uh, Larry Merrifield excavation. Okay, so second. second. James. All right, all in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Moving on to item 1.3, consideration of order 2024-03, providing a key cost installation for economic facility to become a part lease purchase financing with Andrew Scoggins Bank. Uh, Anthony, if you want to go over that a little bit. Sure. So you may recall uh, when you approved a contract with Dave's appliance to convert our facilities to uh, heat pumps, that the balance of the cost that was not funded by efficiency main rebates and by our $50,000 grant from the Community Resilience Program would be financed through Efficiency Maine's Green Bank. So there are two participating banks in that program. One of them is Andros Goggins Bank, which is our depository. But that program offers low interest municipal financing. And, it, and it's meant to be budget neutral. That is, the amount of money that we would save in energy cost would then be applied to refining, to, to repaying the financing uh, over time. So because of the amount of the lease, uh, Bernstein sure said a legal opinion is needed. Uh, and so they presented us with an order from the council specifically authorizing the financing. So the terms, which I've included in your packet, is for a nine-year payout and the total amount to be financed would be $135,000 and change at an interest rate of 6.85%. Now- That's a lot. It, it is a lot. But um, uh, but interest rates have increased uh, in recent times. So um, Mike Ketchen, the owner of Dave's Appliance, has uh, assured us confidently that we can that we will realize twenty thousand dollars a year in energy costs. So again, we would apply that savings to the to the refinancing uh, of this lease payment. Um, How much is the the cost per year for that? Uh, let me look and see. One time we did talk about this, and I was reminded that the decision about paying something about Well, and so, yeah, that's what I was thinking about because that's what we did. It, it was and so, that is an option as well. Now, we don't have $135,000 in ARPA cost, but it gets us pretty close. And then we've, and then we've still got the money that we set aside in the uh, assigned fund balance uh, last year. And so if we just wanted to, to strictly cash fund this between those two sources, um, then that is an option. Um, Steve McDermott uh, called me earlier today and I, I missed his call, but he was telling me the reason he was calling is he, he had sort of a similar thought that we could reduce the financing cost and then use the energy savings that we would realize from the installation of heat pumps towards some of the projects that, uh, that are on your ARPA list. Some of them are, some of them are. So no, Andrew Scoggin has done that, and so we're not going to be we're not going to be out any money as a result. Of this. But to answer your question, Linda, the annual uh, payment on the lease finance would be uh, shy of twenty one thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I mean, I'm not in favor of of leasing this. We we need to either put a combination of 
I think the ARPA funds, if we want to use it and fund balance, yep. I mean, that's saving us money. That's a lot of money for an interest every year. Yeah. Can I make a motion? Where's the where's the proposal for the actual heat pump? Is that so 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 that's yeah, that's not in there because that's something that, that was previously. Okay, that's right. Okay, better. okay. Wait, I looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, first, go ahead. I, uh, I move to approve um, using ARPA funds for partial payment of the heat pumps as opposed to leasing it through Andrew Scott and Second. Second. So, so, so let me let me just get some clarity here. Please. So, um, the next item we were going to talk about the amount of money that we have available in ARPA funds to appropriate. Is one hundred and seven thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars and twenty cents? Is it the intention of the council to appropriate the totality of that towards this project? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then, in addition, to that pay the balance with the uh, monies that were the surplus monies from last year that have been uh, assigned to the designated fund balance. Can I? Uh... Revise that motion then and present a new one. Okay. Yes. Uh, I move to approve um, using or utilizing ARPA funds for partial payment of the heat pumps and utilizing uh, general funds on balance. on balance to approve the balance of the heat pumps and um, uh, finance it ourselves. Second. Second. And we have a motion to approve using our funds of partial payment and remaining balance on the fund balance. Uh, with a motion by Bruce and a second by Linda. All in favor? All are in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item 124, we can break that. Uh, yeah, unless, unless you guys want to hear about some other projects that, uh, you know, that are sort of on the radar, if you will. Okay. We don't have any money left, do we? No. I I I, I wouldn't even do it if you have no money left. Like yeah, that. next time. Okay. Yeah, if we get any more. Okay. All right, so we'll strike that. Moving on to item one twenty five, discussion of salary schedule. So I'm going to do counselor steel. Uh, this was a request to the stuff salary. Do we want to table that item? Yes. Okay. I move to table discussion on item 125 for the date. Second. Sorry. Okay. Chris, can we all okay at the table? All in favor? <laughs> item six, consideration of the name of the Municipal Association candidate slate. We have this uh, ballot right here for. Uh, the nominating committee, Justin Fourier, for the Monmouth Town Manager as vice president in one term. You're and the executive team. committee yeah. members, three year term. There are only three. We vote for three. David Sear, Frenchville Town Manager, Michelle Barulo, poll select person for the town of Bethel, and Matthew Garside, Poland Town Manager. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the proposed slate of candidates in item one twenty six Main Municipal Association candidate. I'll second. Any discussion? A little bit of discussion. Um, the I'm trying to find the paperwork over here. Oh, there's not a motion over here. Oh, there's no motion. So is this something that we vote as a council? That's correct. Okay. One vote as a council. And then we'll sign and submit it. There's only one choice for the vice president. We don't lie. No. They don't lie. What's that? They don't lie. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah. And just after the uh, whole damn discussion, my confidence is, my confidence level is a little low. So. All right. So we have a motion and a second to approve the casting of the Winthrop's Town votes for MMA Vice President and committee members. Uh, all in favor? All are in favor? So we'll pass this around and we can sign that. 
Uh, item 147, consideration of approval of the minutes of the July 1st, 2024 council meeting. To approve the minutes. Yes, I can. There you go. All in favor? All in favor? Item 128, consideration of disbursement warrants. I didn't see anything. I started. Yeah, I moved over. Thanks. To approve the uh, disbursement warrants as presented. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. Item 129, consideration of recommendations from the appointments committee. Don't, we don't have any recommendations after this time. No. Yeah. Do you have you heard back from any of the man with some here for I'm sure? Yeah. I just spoke with one today. Um that is something that we should have on our agenda next month. Yeah. The committees, yeah. Yeah, we need roles and responsibilities. Yes. We discuss that. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I am, but we'll kind of close the loop because we didn't have any meetings since right. that happened. So I haven't been yeah. to Right. Uh, they had one scheduled, I think, for August 17th, but that was prior to them voting to suspend their operations. I mean, there would be a committee that was yes. having the objections. Well, I, I had had a conversation with them mostly because I know them all. Yeah. <laughs> and I did tell them to, and they agreed to. Keep no. working. Okay. So then theoretically, at least they're still moving on, but That's they still have objections. Did you call Peltier resign? He did. Yeah. Yes. So I, I'm unsure of Mr. Peltier's status. Correct. He's what? I'm unsure of his status. All right. I think he resigned. I just have to get, you know, I, I didn't wait to, you know, assume he had sort of meeting, you know, but I didn't come in for some. That is pending the update to those rules. Okay. So we can talk about that at the next meeting. We'll go to the agenda. We get to be the cheerleader, Jim. We got to get him back on the right. agenda. Uh, last thing, I don't know. Are you going to talk about this? Point this out? Um, no, please go ahead. This up to um, anyone in the audience or online that the annual report was published uh, through the town. First time in a long time, and uh, it covers everything from the audit and financial statements and updates from all of the departments. So, um, really great work, I believe, from the staff. So, yep. thank yep. you very much. We're working on it as our first report since 2017. Yeah. It, will be, it will be an annual occurrence moving forward. These uh, annual reports, I just came from the year of It's very funny. And the, and the fire station. Yeah. But, yeah. We're going to start a year ago. They weren't this big, though. They were that pretty. Now they were much smaller, but that's pretty. Nice photo, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's my statue covered. I'm But who's counting? So there is a box by the front door, and the windows are available at the front office and the library. The library. The police station. And I will open it up. I have, All right, great. I have something to okay. take any new book. Can I do this one public comment? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yes. We don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to give you a comment or a public comment. Go ahead. Okay. We don't have to respond, though. What? Go ahead. We don't have to respond, though. Yeah. Um, I, I was looking at that road paving uh, and road acceptance request, and I've been thinking for a long time that perhaps the town ought to consider not accepting any more roads that new government should be left to their own road. You know, how we'll frame that around road standards if we even want to have road standards, but we shouldn't accept any roads when you look at our paving expenses. Um, you know, um, and maintenance expenses and same expenses and everything else. I don't know why. Private associations couldn't handle the issues. Thanks, you, Mindy. All right, Bruce, and then Aaron. Um, I, I have sent to your attention. Uh, I received the paving schedule. Mm -hmm. Rambler Road is set to be paved the week of the 12th, I believe. Mm -hmm. I also brought to your attention through a separate email the addition 
two regular road of speed bumps, speed humps, or speed valleys um, to slow traffic down going up the hill. I mean, sign deterrence is great, yeah. but I think there has to be some type of physical impairment to slow people down, at least in two locations up Rambler Road. I, uh, I can't recall exactly who I consulted with. Did I talk with you about that, Chief? Oh. Well, we had a we had a conversation on this, the uh, need or the need of putting speed bumps in this from Yeah. Bruce, I'll have to go back through my notes, but but I talked with public works people, chief, school district, and there wasn't a lot of support for that just because of um, the wear and tear on the buses going over those. The speed humps. Uh, if we put a speed table in, I think it would eliminate a lot of that, any kind of additional damage on the buses. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it would fare with the, uh, maybe it would help the electric buses run a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but I, I think a deterrence, other than a sign that posts your speed, which nobody pays attention to, uh, and that lack of available enforcement up there. Um, just deters going up that hill for a lecture. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to call our I'm gonna to have to call our paving contractor tomorrow and just see if that's a possibility and then what the cost would be just because there would be additional paving. I know that the new lot of travels is on the main lately, and those speed tables are more frequent or prevalent down there, and they aren't anywhere near as violently as speed bump. No, the DOT is actually mandated. Uh, if we can solve them, then it has to be the specifications that are the tape allowed because of yeah. the, the danger of the how they use these. That's the last. Sandy, is this pertaining to roads? Well, no, when it's not, he was just talking, yeah, it is okay. pertaining to roads. I just need, I don't understand the question about the development that wants us to take over the roads. So that was like, he was saying something like 15 years ago. So what, what's that process? They built that with an agreement that the town was going to take it over? So or they would like the town to be. This is going to segue into what I wanted to mention a few things. Okay. So it looks like our ordinance uh, was updated last in 1995. Oh. Um, and there was a process, a lot of towns have a process of taking over road ownership. Um, I think the most re I'm not, I'm not, most recent Maple Ridge. I'm not sure. Maybe it's going to answer that, but it's been done the team here. Um, and it looks like in June 5th, 1995, it looks like the planning department has a duty to make sure that it's not a burden for any unnecessary hardships. I don't know, I have to go through this, but I, I was wondering if maybe we could look at updating well i mean I, th I think a lot of this conversation right now is is uh maybe a bit premature until we get to the meeting of of the 19th and let's hear um, well i think there's no comments well, on that, but I want to report i feel like too but um, my guess is when they did make the development they had talked about so that. i guess my question just sitting there listening today is why now it's been how many years or like 20 years <laughs> i mean i think so I, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, the additional housing that they're going to in there going to be yeah. now they're looking at doing an association would be they would probably have the funding to do the second code and one of the upgrades to maintain the roads back. Yeah, the upgrades on my roads, so I can get in my house easier, but I'm not going to get it. <laughs> but I'm wondering now, like after all these years, we have been doing this since 1995. It just from the bikes, like sitting up here, and I'm like, why now? That just seems really strange to me. And will that trigger other people to be like, hey, well, they did it for them. I want it for me. And when does it stop? That other part? towns use it as a way to bring the potential of development into their town. I, I get it. printed out the door for ordinance just so we could. I do. I understand. But that's not that's, my, that's been here for a very long time. Right, right, right. But it's not like somebody's coming in and creating a development. Yeah, I, West, so I mean, I, so. I do remember a discussion about it when they brought it up that eventually they're going to come back to the town. I, I think that was the discussion. Mm -hmm. But we have to have a discussion because there's other roads in the, right. in the town that want to be, you know, the town to take it over. And the question becomes is if these roads are not getting plowed by the town, I have a problem with 100% of the tax you know, them paying 100% versus 
you know, they're not getting services, they can't get services, then to me, there has to be some consideration for that, I think. So because he was like 60,000 huh? that. I don't know, I couldn't understand. So he's gonna put the 60,000 in, then we're gonna say, oh yeah, okay, then, well, don't. then it's our problem. And then do we have to reimburse That's, him for that? No, no, but no. moving forward. No, it, moving it, forward, it's so our problem. Yeah. Yeah. Out, right? That's six, yeah. Future so if you say no, and is he gonna put that? How many candles are so All right, so I was just curious. Thank you, Daniel. All right, we're gonna move on to the town report. People's timber, the tax station. They're not getting a service that everybody else is getting. Okay, go ahead. Hi. Long anticipated town manager's report. Sure, sure, and sweet, and it's hot in here. Um, so, if you if you don't mind, I'd like to ask Chief uh, Berlin to come to the podium because um, I asked him to, during this report to talk about um, an idea he has for studying uh, police department consolidation between our people. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Chief, you want to Moving moving forward out. It was my intention that I think we're, we're missing the boat on some issues as far as uh, utilizing resources, better using resources within the, the two departments. Um, so, in, in order to, to move this forward, I want to put a study committee, a feasibility study committee together to determine um, the pros, the cons. Um, Potential savings um, and just empowering the community to take a close look at what um, the benefits would be to consolidating both monitor and the police departments under one uh, one roof, so to speak. And so, uh, in putting this committee together, uh, I was looking for um, a member from the council here, a member from the select board, and one. Um, Couple of citizens from the public, from both towns, police department personnel, um, and the town managers to work on this committee to, to really take a close look, analyze the possibilities um, of doing what I think is a right move for both of these communities by consolidating the service under one. Under one. You stay off for another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that is great leverage, Jim. I like it. <laughs> and then also, I would just say, adding to that charge would be the thought of future like housing, like building a station on the roof of two and half and one to patent lot. I think Bruce and I would be happy to serve. You just That's said cool. I'd like to. Be, I'd like to serve on it too. If we can consolidate, I like. When are you looking at the feasibility study? I would like to. Want? I'd like to put the committee together huh? so we can get started on it as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Do you guys? Does Mon want? Or do they feel like they're not No, I didn't mean it. Uh, he just said he wanted to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did too. So. The 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 Mon Police Department was. Uh, added on to it just with the old ambulance garage, if you remember. Yeah. Well, uh, it's not designed okay. for our purpose. Right. That's why we have to bring all our business over to winter because yeah. we can't process them. Well, it's no I mean, we should limit it if other counselors have an interest in sitting on that. I mean, to be quite honest, if other counselors have an interest in sitting on that, I think it's probably all the better. If yeah, they're going to consolidate, so I mean, if you, I would like to definitely attend the meetings. So, keep keeping in mind, there's at least three of us that have to get reelected. I, I would like to sit in that committee. <laughs> that well, I mean, we, we might, we might all find That's ourselves so not here. Does he need to need our approval? Would it would it be open to the public or would these because if we have three counselors on this floor? Well, no, a quorum is four, so so that's not an issue. Right. And, and I would recommend not having these as public sessions simply because they need to be work sessions. So, uh, point of order. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the, the 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 charge would be to just be a feasibility this not going to contracts not going into developments not going into anything like that it's just feasibility does it, does this committee feel like this is worth going the next step Fantastic. Okay. should we i don't know we'll study for it. one uh, one other question that kind of kind of goes along with that as far as public safety goes what about uh, fire department? Is this would this be a time to have at least an initial discussion on firehouse? I I spoke with uh, Chief Brooks about that not all that long ago. He was not hot on the idea, and he didn't think other chiefs would be as well, simply because of the um, the responsive nature. But 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 I think but I think that's a that's a discussion for another. It's a timing another issue. Time. I mean, when you're when you're in a fire, it's I thought we floated I do. <laughs> I, just, I just want one more, one more item I want to bring up is tomorrow night is National Night Out. Yes. And the free burgers, free hot dogs. Uh, everybody's welcome to come over. We start at five tomorrow. We run until 7, 7.30 till we run out of food. That's, that's it, Mon. That's Mon Mon the fire uh, police station, yes. Let me let out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I would... Um, I'd, I'd be remorse if I didn't mention, because I know our library director who's online uh, was eager to talk about this during the ARPA discussion, but it is likely that we're going to need to find some additional funds for the elevator project just as a contingency at this point. And so I just want to put that on your radar. We still have the monies that we're going to be dipping into for the uh, for the heat pumps. Uh, that project is now underway, and they anticipate having it done uh, by December. So... Seeing overages in the future? No, 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 but but we just need to be prepared for that. So uh, it looks like Richard just. Richard, are you nervous? Are you nervous about the elevator overrun? Uh, no, I wouldn't say nervous, but um, we, uh, you know, we had talked about during the budget process with the council um, some things that I noticed, uh, which sort of have, have come true. So we started demoing the walls um, at the end of last week, for example. And, you know, there's some electrical that is there that we had no way of knowing what was there until we demoed the walls. And then, of course, uh, the new elevator is bigger than the old one to meet the code. And there is a substantial amount of HVAC, including um, an actual heating unit that is where the new elevator will be. Uh, and HVAC, you know, heating and plumbing is not cheap. So uh, currently the company H.E. Callahan is working with a couple subs, HVAC and an electrician uh, to, to get me some numbers. I am meeting with the site supervisor and the architect tomorrow. I'm not sure if they'll have numbers for me yet, but. Um, you know, we need we need to work through those things. And then there's also I don't know how familiar you guys are with the, that area downstairs uh, where the new elevator is going. But there is a support beam that is sitting right outside the elevator. And right now, um, you know, if you're if you're using a wheelchair, you kind of go to one side of it. Uh, one thing that was a little bit overlooked is that the the new size of the elevator is going to block that. That means that that post has got to go. And you either need to put a new post in or do some structural work uh, with the beams. So uh, the architect's going to look at that for me. I think he's already been looking at it, and hopefully I'll get an update on that tomorrow. But obviously, when you add all those things up, it's... Um, you know, it's it's going to cost uh, something. And and unfortunately, there's not really, you know, these aren't exciting things that we want to do, but you have to do them to stay to code. And um, there's really no sense in putting in a new elevator if somebody in a wheelchair is using it and they can't get past that post. So that has to go. Um, and, you know, really, that's you know we have a couple people who who sometimes like to get downstairs or go to events 
in elevators, that's about 95% of that elevator usage. So um, that that does need to be done. Is it a wood or a concrete support beam? It's a, con it's a concrete post. Question right there. Um, when you, when, so this is starting, correct? The construction? Yeah, so I, actually, real quick, if you want, I can just give you an update of where we're at. Just like a sure. one minute update. So um, one, last. One. Yeah, let's just one. Yeah, 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 give the update, but, but make it very brief okay. here. Yep. Okay. So last Monday, the 29th, um, they mobilized, set up the um, equipment and, and the staging to um, demoing the slab and they hope to pour a new slab at the end of the week and then begin framing the new shaft uh, the week after. And then I just kind of wanted to, I, I know, uh, Anthony said December 1st, which is probably the case. Uh, they're aiming for the end of October, November 1st, give or take two weeks, which would put us in mid November, given some of the stuff we've run into. Um, I'd say December 1st is probably, um, our, uh, our goal. So that that's kind of the 45 second update of where we're at, what we've done so far. Richard, didn't we have Community firm or architecture firm come in and do this uh, all the pre engineering for this, yeah, design or call, you know, for the RFP and all that stuff. Yes. And they nobody picked measure. up on this post. Oh, Architects are rarely responsible and, and for their own mistakes. I mean, uh, it just seems like it's a problem. Well, that that would have been a pretty, I mean, I don't know the situation you're talking about exactly, but it seems like it would be a Pretty obvious issue that right. would, would, so uh, I'm not knowledgeable enough to know, you know, what he would be responsible for or not. Anthony and I could look at the contract, but you know, I think the law states that you need like 33 inches or something like that of, of a through pass. I think it does technically meet that by like a centimeter, but if if you look at it and you were sitting in a wheelchair to get through there, your knuckles are gonna rub on that post. So maybe it does technically meet the law. It would, I think it would not behoove us to keep it though. Is it this the exact reason why we hired a architect? And we had this issue when, this is about the the, the actual- Pulse, pulse yeah. yeah. I could have sworn we discussed this issue and they were going to make sure all of those specifications. I mean, it's unacceptable that that's not, that has not happened. I mean, at this point, I mean, I don't care. Well, there is, I mean, there, I mean, the, to me, it's not, I mean, who's looking at this stuff? I mean, I understand that we're not, you know, you know, when you hire somebody to do this, this should be done. I mean, well, you pay, you pay, good, you're uh, paying a good you're, chunk of change. Downstairs. Exactly. I, I, this is not okay with me. This is not okay at all. Well, architect surveys the work, makes up the drawings, and then the contractor works according to those drawings. And if you find something the architect didn't anticipate, you usually find that the architect had an escape clause. So it, it it's pretty rare to be able to back charge an architect. Well, I don't think and it's not the contractor's fault. I, well, I I think that the contractor bears some responsibility for it. I mean, this is a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, it is. And I also think I also think that this is going to that sounds to me in a concrete support post is going to be a significant amount of money. I'll say but we're thinking is it's, it, it's still within legal specs if we leave, don't touch it right now. It's still within legal specs. Well, he thinks I'd it have, is, right? I'd have to check on that. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it probably is, but I I would highly suggest not keeping it because, like I said, it is tight. Um, and I think you're, I, I think you would have unhappy uh, people that are using that, uh, especially the type, you know, the handicapped people that are using it wouldn't be very happy. Um, I will say though, like 
the the architect the contract that we chose to go with is an all inclusive it's not like by the hour or what we need to add um so what we what we've paid him like this additional engineering there's no extra charge for that the, obviously there's a charge to do the work but if he had engineered that and put it in the rfp theoretically the bid would have been higher by this amount you know regardless so i, I just want to say i don't we're not we're not going to pay extra for the engineering or the architect for this error it would have changed our thought process potentially as far as the best thing be well this is yeah this is called the punch list uh privy okay and um you know, it's great work by a general contractor to come in, get low bids, secure it, and then say, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, you've got a three-foot wide support beam here, and we're going to have to remove it. Uh, you know, that's not cheap. Yeah, I, I want to say, too, it was the only bid. We had we had trouble getting anybody to bid on this project. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the update. I think that's the one that I said that. Yeah. Well, then, well, not, just just one quick thing i'm not going to like move forward if they come in tomorrow and say hey this beam is 50 grand to move you know what i mean like if they say it's five or six grand we've already budgeted for that like, like we do have a an overage contingency we'll move forward but if it's significant and exorbitant i'm obviously going to meet with anthony and then we'll come back to you we're not just going to plow, plow ahead if it's you know going to put us in a, a big red hole the overage contingency uh, seems like it's getting eaten up pretty quickly. Yes. All right. Probably. Thank you, Richard. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about uh, now for the long awaited town manager report. <laughs> oh. um, so, a week from today, we will do uh, public works director interviews. We have four applicants, uh, any of whom I think could do the job. It's just a matter of who we think would be best. Uh, to do the job. So we'll be uh, working on that a week from today. Uh, I sent an email earlier today about uh, the Legislative Policy Committee priorities uh, from the MMA. So take a look at that because uh, if you have thoughts as to what our legislative priorities would be, I'd be interested in, in hearing those and trying to incorporate those or advocate for those uh, with the MPC. Well, one, one thing I know that is potentially I have to look at the issue myself because I don't know what the ins and outs are. I, w I was not a, not involved in it this year, but the tribal bill will be back. And the, the one of the things with that tribal bill is they want sovereignty over the rivers. We have municipal discharges in those rivers. And I guess I'd like to know what the potential cost is to Winthrop if we cannot discharge, if that bill goes forward, which I know they're going to put it in. Okay, let's talk about that offline. All right. yeah. But anyway, so if you have legislative uh, priorities, let me know and, and I'll see if we can uh, advocate for those. Uh, just a reminder uh, to use your .gov email addresses uh, so that uh, people can get accustomed to that. I mean, there's, there's going to be a certain period in time where we're going to have to pull the plug on the .org simply because those do not have the level of security that are .gov addresses. So as you're emailing, as you're emailing me, for instance, you know, use the .gov. Um, everyone knows nomination papers are out. Those are due by September the 6th. Um, and then lastly, uh, my daughter is arriving from, uh, from New York tomorrow. And so I will be in and out and working a little bit from home while she's here this week. Uh, so, but if you need me, Call, text, email. I'll respond, and uh, and then next week, just as an FYI, the annual conference of Maine town and city managers is from Wednesday through Friday. Uh, so that's always a good experience because the last time I attended one of their uh, training conferences, uh, I learned about the opportunity that led to one point one million dollars in federal funding for you know, communications. So I think it's a uh, it's always a good thing to attend. That's my report. Good question. Where are we at with our whole real estate saga? Good, good question. We uh, actually met today with uh, Darren Heishi, who is our real estate broker, uh, of the initial 10 uh, properties that we foreclosed on. We managed to finagle all of the payments that were due from seven of those. 
And so of the three remaining properties, one is a vacant property. Uh, one is a mobile home. So we we own the mobile home, but not the land underneath it. And so we think that the per, the person who owns that property may be interested in having the mobile home to sort of rent it out. And then we have one home uh, where a lady is infirmed in an assisted living care situation. She's deeply, deeply in debt, and her power of attorney has already told us sell it. So, uh, so that's good. And um, on Friday, we managed to get all of the back taxes due on five Winthrop Center Road. Yeah, and and, and that was a you know that was fourteen thousand plus dollars for that one. So. Uh, corresponded today with uh, with our attorney, and so we have a plan moving forward. So we've pretty much taken care of all the properties that we foreclosed on this year. Now we're going back and looking at some of the properties where the documentation may be, um, there may be gaps in the documentation, but we've come up with a, a plan for our attorney on moving forward with those, and uh, we've had interest from at least one abutter for one of those properties who's interested in buying. So, so that's giving us the impetus to Push forward. How long is it? How what is the uh, period that we wait before we put a lien on a property for unpaid taxes? Just curious. Oh gosh, now I'm not I'm not the tax collector, uh, but um, if you do not pay your taxes within 18 months, that's when the lien is placed on your property. Just curious because I uh, recently have been um, having some my taxes went up. At my camp, at like seven, six thousand percent, <laughs> and uh, you must have made some so well, really magnificent uh, upgrades. I've been fighting with them. It's in Burlington, and I've been fighting with them uh, about the fact that it's gone up so high. It's it's not there's no building or anything on it. They got it got reassessed, and so we uh, they've agreed to for a tax abatement. But in that period, that since uh, April. Uh, between April and now, they have already given me a 30 day lien notice. <laughs> I'm just curious as to it's what I'm not aware of, of, of anything like that. That's 30 days. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, they, they, they've got to file a lien if I don't pay my tax 30 days. And they sent notification to. There's, there's sta in, in statue, I believe there is a, isn't that in statue that what? All, all, the, all the timelines are prescribed by law. Yeah. The timelines are. I just want to say, you know, I, I know I told this to Shannon and I had, had this conversation with Anthony. People better be prepared for the reval here in Winthrop because we they just went through one in Wayne. My taxes went up 60 percent. Or my, my valuation, 60 percent. It went from 36 on vacant land that's half that's got half swampland to eighty four thousand dollars. So if you think that we're going to get out of this with a uh, 20% like they were talking about, we're not. I think it's going to be one hell of a lot higher than that. So be prepared. <laughs> Bruce, did you, did you get the tax committee straightened out? The, the committee? Bruce, looking at me. Right. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be Bruce. So. <laughs> Tax commitment. No, that is not. The tax abatement. No, we have two members. We need two more. Uh, so you're talking about the tax assessment review. Yeah, yeah tax assessment. I understand that we're under a timeline, but it's very difficult to find somebody that wants to serve on uh, It's only a timeline if we get a case, then it, then it becomes a crime. Absolutely. But yeah. I anticipate with the reavow. Is that exactly. we'll oh, cases? Well, that's why. That's I, true. That's but that's, that's, that's a couple of years into the future. Understand that, but I have to have that set. Yeah. I serve on the I serve on that board where I live, and the, and the only reason I agreed to it is I think we would never meet. So anything else? That's it. Well, okay. I have one. All right. That's Anthony Buster Go ahead. Did you ever find out who was cutting on that town lot at the end of Wall Street? I have not. That's what we own a lot at the end of Wall Street on the right hand side. Hmm. And somebody been cutting the trees off. They built a new house a lot before that, and somebody been cutting the trees off and clearing them all. So we that the town owns. So I was just kind of wondering, who, you know. All right. So 